All right, so in this video, I'm gonna explain my idea of modifying these springs to hold the increased weight of that Cummins diesel that I'm gonna swap into this pickup. So, if you're looking at this spring here, first I probably should say what it is. These are aftermarket springs. Um, I don't know if you can see that logo there, but they're Atlas Springs. Atlas is a company in, I believe, the city of industry, California. <clears throat> and if you look at these springs, it looks like they aren't even modified, pretty much. It looks like they're not even modified. Um, and I hope that wind isn't going to ruin this recording. <laughs> but if you look a little more closely, you'll see there's one leaf that doesn't have any corrosion or anything on it. And that is this leaf, the third leaf from the top. Look how well that fits in there though. I mean, I, I drilled it and put the plastic um, know, spring inserts, I guess you call them, on the ends. And it fits in there like it's made to, which is pretty impressive to me. I'm not impressed with myself, I'm just impressed that I could actually get some, find this leaf and uh, that it would work that well. But it's a pro comp at a leaf and the part number is 13124. It's a 50 inch long leaf and the curvature of that and the length is just about perfect for these Atlas springs. These are uh, 52 inch, 8 inch lift springs. I didn't have to cut this leaf down or anything, it just fit right in there like that. I did have to drill it for the spring inserts, that was kind of a pain, but and it is it does have more free arc than you see right now. The reason why it's it's held in there without the center pin having a nut on it is that uh, these clamps here are tight. They're somewhat tight on it, which is perfect. Give me that much more uh, torsional control over the axle. That's what these clamps. I mean, that's that's one of the things they do. So, but I also want to add a little tech info get into a little more detail about how this all works um, and also explain something I got flamed for online on my favorite forum <laughs> yeah that I'm not a member on it's pirate 4x4 where all they do is talk crap about each other and then post up their stuff which is even worse than what they were just talking crap about I actually had a guy creep on me so hard that on there that he went on another forum to find me and then talk shit about me for asking a question about these shims right here these are these are actually made by the same company WFO concepts and these were the shims they sold a couple years ago um, as you can see the hole in them is big enough to fit over watch over the end of the center pin See, and then these here bolt into the spring pack. Obviously, that that's a diameter of that center pin bolt, and then they have that. It's cut at an angle here, so it sits flat. The head of the bolt isn't trying to bend at an angle. <clears throat> and then here we have these are uh, sort of custom made for me by Offroad Design because they're cut at at two degrees. To show you what I mean by the two degree cut. All you gotta do is set this on here, set this one on here like that, and they're flat. See, so they're they're cut at two degrees, and uh, these are sold by Offroad Design as a zero rate at a leaf. They're also sold by uh, DIY4x.com as an easy inch. They're I think they're exactly the same design. Man, what is that? Garbage truck or something over there. Anyway, <clears throat> at first I was gonna run these, these zero rates, and then I thought, well, in principle, I don't like that. Well, I'll explain why. Because people people think they're okay uh, just for the simple fact that they bolt into the spring pack. They don't just sit under it like a, a normal lift block. But, and the thing is, uh, they still, by increasing the distance between the ground or the surface of the tires on the bottom of the tire and that the center line of the leaf spring, they do increase 
the amount of torsional force that's exerted on the spring. Uh, a way to explain that is say you got four inch lift blocks and you're running uh, 32 inch tires. To your springs, that is exactly the same as running 40 inch tires with no lift blocks. Because you got a tire with eight inches more diameter, that means it's going to be sitting up uh, four inches higher off the ground, just like the four inch lift block. So it's doing the exact same thing if you look at the amount of torsional force uh, that's able to exert on the spring. What I mean by torsional force is, is uh, like say you're slam, you slam on your brakes, it's that, it's the amount of force that moves in that direction is try, trying to twist that spring. So it just gives it more leverage over the spring. These obviously aren't gonna like pop out or anything unless your center pin breaks, but I mean, it's basically, if, if I could run 37s, putting these in there, it's like running uh, 39s. So, having said that though, they're still kind of cool. I still like them. I mean, I still bought them and I had them made for me. I had them cut at the two degree shim. And um, I like that they give the spring a nice solid surface to sit on. I don't know how much that matters, but they're a little wider than a spring perch on the Dana 60 here. Let's see if I can get that to show up. Oh, I'm getting bitten by some insect. All right, so there's the, the perch on the 60 and I set this on there. Yeah, see it's a, it's a little bit longer. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Um, but the thing I got flamed about asking online was what's the difference between these shims that have the bigger holes in them that don't fit through the center pin, they just fit over the end of it, and the ones that do. And the guy's like, well, everyone, you can do something right or you can do it half ass That's what he says, but no explanation, just talking crap. Well, the bottom line is some of these, you can use these in certain applications and other other applications, they will not work. Let me explain what I mean by that. Take one of those, come over here. This side. All right, so here we got the factory perch. And this is not a flat surface right here. That's not flat, it's slightly concave. Like the middle right here is lower. So if you set this on there, um, there's a little gap between this surface, the bottom of this surface and the top of the spring perch and that um, head of that center pin won't go down far enough into that into this piece here. It won't go down it only goes like halfway into it. That is not legitimate. However, if you take these and put them in the back my spring purchase from uh, Rough Stuff, Rough Stuff Specialties. They are much flatter, as you can see that. Oh, I don't know how well you can see that, but and the spring will actually see how the pin's sticking through that. You still have enough room there to run these little shims in the back, just not. So the guys, the guy who was talking crap about me about that, probably didn't realize that. Some applications it's fine, some it's not. So, what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I'm gonna install these in the spring, on the bottom of the springs. And this one is gonna go on the top, underneath this plate here. You gotta have a shim on the bottom and the top with that cast housing, because you need to keep your plate uh, <clears throat> perpendicular to those studs. You have to do that or else you bend the studs and they don't stay tight and they break. So, and also I would not ever run more than two degrees of shim on that Dana cast perch. Some guys, I've seen people run as much as like 12 degrees of shims and they, it's so half-assed. They take these huge shims, they weld them onto the spring plates, they weld them onto the, the cast housing and then they wonder why their, their center pins get sheared. So if you gotta run like 12 degrees of shim, just just link your axle, don't even try it. So, but 
all in all, I'm really curious to see how this works out. And this, with this add a leaf here, and largely, this was largely motivated by this guy, uh, Pete Williamson from Atlas Springs, quoted me $900 to make me another set of springs that'll hold up that Cummins. Now, I wish I could, I wish I was rich. I wish I could just shell out $900 for a couple new springs. But I mean, even if I could, I still wouldn't do it just on principle because why would you do that when you can spend under a hundred dollars? Like these Ada leaves are only like 87 bucks or something. So the Ada leaves are like 87 bucks and you just get the, the plastic spring insert things here. They're only like a couple bucks a piece. And it's just, I mean, you'd be dumb to, to buy the whole new spring. So anyway, I hope this works out and I'll post up a video when I got the motor sitting in the truck and see how much it does or see how level it sits or see how it sits if it doesn't sit high enough i probably will go back and add these because all i gotta do at that point is uh get longer studs from off-road design i already emailed that guy chris hollick or however you say that and he's he uh they do have studs that'll work and i won't even have to take the springs off the truck all i gotta do is pick the truck up and pull the center pin out so it should be pretty easy to do that if I have to, like a sit level. So, all right, well, thanks for watching.